everybody, it's Christina from Redefine Creative, and I am here with another episode of I Double Dare You. And this is a series where on the first Friday of the month, my friend Laura Alberts and I each post a video kind of issuing a challenge to the other person as well as to all of you. And then we come back on the third Friday of the month and share our take on the other person's challenge. So for today, I have grabbed just a bunch of leftovers. So I have some pattern paper from a 12 by 12 paper pad that was from One Can You Two's Creekside. And then I also have some leftovers from um, like a packet of paper that I had purchased from close to my heart. And that's the one that has that explore and the moose and the trees and that kind of thing. And so for today, I want to challenge all of you as well as Laura to create a multi-photo layout. So I have three photos. I want to see a multi-photo layout and I want to see some torn paper layers. So not just straight edges, use some paper tearing. So multi-photo layout with uh, torn pattern paper edging. And so I have this kind of like beige, tan, khaki color that's going to go on the top half of my layout. And I want that pale blue to be the background, but then I want some pops of this really like darker, bright blue paper. And so I'm just kind of thinking about where I can get that in um, to my layers. Um, I did take my three photos and I cut them all to three by four size and backed them with a thin border of white cardstock. And then I'm also going to back them with a thin layer of this darker blue. And so if you are working with photos that have a lot of blue or kind of khaki color, like in this case, um, that dark color behind it kind of will, will pull your eye to those photos. So there was enough blue coming off of the water in these particular pictures that I wanted to kind of enhance that with some darker blue pops. And so I'm going to put a little bit of this pattern paper behind my full like layers here. And I do decide that I want that edge to be torn as well. So I'm tearing the khaki and then I'm also going to tear that like navy blue color as well. And it doesn't need to be even. It doesn't need to be perfect in any sort of way whatsoever. So you can see mine isn't even all the way across and that is totally fine. Um, I did kind of decide at this point that I want my photos to be on an angle and that's not something that I do very often because typically I end up liking them better just kind of straight on the page. Um, but for some reason this series of three I just really liked having at an angle. So these are all pictures we had um, driven up into kind of into the mountains near my house and there's a big lake up there so we had pulled over and the kids were just skipping rocks and things into the lake and so I'm going to pull out a couple of these Tim Holtz um, like distressed tickets and it's a pack that's meant for journaling but I like to tuck them in into my embellishment clusters it gives a really good foundation piece and I also have this piece of frame and I end up messing around a lot with where this frame goes and I end up using probably a little bit bigger chunk of that than I had expected. I like how it looks, but I wish I would have made it a little bit smaller. So I may adjust my layout even after the video is done. Um, but I loved this pattern paper with all of these phrases. And so I'm going to fill my piece of frame that I have cut for the bottom with that pattern paper. And I fill one for the top, but I don't end up actually using that piece. I only use the one on the bottom. But I don't necessarily want to have anything covering it up. Like I want all of the words and icons to show. So I'm just going to tuck the edge of it into kind of where I'm layering. And it just wasn't working for me up here in the top section. I do have that little like phrase branding strip that I'm going to use up there that kind of pulls all of the text together. But I liked that little like pop of color. And I liked having all of those scripty words. And so at this point, when I'm putting the layout together, I probably could have left it the way it is right now and liked it better than I like the final draft. But sometimes you don't realize that until you watch the replay back. Like when I'm creating and doing the video for YouTube, I'm like, oh, that actually looked better than what I ended up with. Why didn't I leave it like that? Um, but you'll see how it changes as I start gluing everything down. And I don't even know that I realized it changed until watching on the replay. Um, I am going to take some additional little pop of that blue, darker blue pattern paper 
and tear it for the top cluster above my photos so that I can build one embellishment cluster up there and then I have the one that I'm building underneath my photos. Um, I have some extra like stickers and chipboard from the same set from Close to My Heart so I'm just grabbing a few of those little pieces to tuck in as well and then I kind of am playing around with like how am I going to get a title on this page? What else am I going to do? And I wanted to get a little pop of green up at the top because I have that little green tree that I want to use down at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and just trim off this green branding strip and tuck that into like the top layers behind my photo matting layer. And I like that that kind of carries that little pop of green over to the top of the page. And so that kind of leads to me using this little green tag on the bottom um, left corner of my page. And that's going to end up being the home for where my title is going to sit. Um, so once I have that cut out, I'm going to kind of layer it along the bottom. And I apologize, it's a little bit off screen. I still am struggling to get used to where I have to create on my desk compared to where this new camera setup sits. Um, but I do move it up for you. Yay, I actually remember to do that part. So there you can see it. After I glued all those layers down, I ended up with that frame in a different place. And now it kind of bugs me. Um, I feel like I liked it better the way it was before, where it was a little bit less showing and tilted the other direction. Um, so I'll probably go back and change it off screen now that I've seen it the other way I liked it better. But you get the idea of having this frame with the pattern paper and kind of all of the scripty words and icons that emphasize my theme of the page. So then I went ahead and added another little tree and I've got a couple of little pieces that I'm adding throughout the layout and trying to decide what I want to do as far as a title element goes and what little finishing touches that I want to put on this layout. So I'm just trying this month especially um, over in the Rediscover Your Stash Facebook group, Sarah and I are challenging people to use up a bunch of their leftovers. So I end up, I don't know if you guys do, but I end up a lot of times with kits and packages from different collections and things where I have just a few pieces left. And the part about that is, when you're down to just the last few pieces, for me, that typically means I'm down to my pieces that are not necessarily my most favorite out of the pack. So they aren't the ones that I used first, and they aren't the ones that I loved the most. They're just kind of the things either I'm struggling to use or I'm not really sure what to do with them. So I just save them, and I have a few pieces left of everything. And so I'm really making an effort this month with since the Rediscover Your Stash group is focusing on using those leftovers to try and use some of my leftovers. So that kind of inspired me with this layout to grab a bunch of things that I just haven't played with in a long time and just have a few things left from. Um, so I'm going to add these numbers that say 1, 2, 3. I tried to put them down by my title so that the title could be 1, 2, 3, skip. Um, I felt like it was just too like crowded down in that title space so I'm going to add them on top of the photos instead and I like that a lot better so I guess my title could still be one two three skip um but it works so then I'm just going to finish this layout off um I'm trying to see if there's anything else I want to add and I find these little cork arrows and I've slowly been using this pack of arrows and it's also in my little leftovers bin so I'm going to go ahead and add one of those to each of my three clusters and I'm gonna end up finishing it up with some Nouveau drops. So I add some Midnight Blue, which is like the darker blue that kind of matches that navy paper. And then I also add some white stone drops, which are just gonna give it a little bit of texture. And that is basically gonna do it for this particular layout. So your challenge for I Double Dare You This Time, Laura, as well as everybody else watching, is to create a multi-photo layout and you must include paper tearing in some of your layers. And I cannot wait to come back and see what you all make and what Laura comes up with for her, for her challenge as well. Have a good day. Bye, everybody.